hello hello everybody welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new we have got four super easy and delicious crock pot recipes to share with you guys in today's video let's go ahead and get started First up is three packet roast. For this one, you're gonna need a packet of all jus, a packet of ranch dressing, a packet of brown gravy. You will also need a two to three pound roast. Now I'm doubling this, so that's why you see two roast in there. Um, and I will be doubling my packages. As you see, I just kind of put the three packages on the bottom one, put the top roast on, and then I did the three packages on top. I will have this recipe linked down below for you guys for just one roast. And you're also gonna need some water. I like to just pour it around. And then you put a stick of butter right on top. Now this one, this roast and the mashed potatoes and carrots that y'all see in today's video is a full meal. Um, I made a big like crock pot lunch after church one day. Um, and so I woke up or I stayed up till two in the morning to put this roast on. That way it had plenty of time to cook. Y'all know I always talk about how roasts need a good 10 hours to cook. So I made sure to stay up um, and that way I could get it on early and let it cook all night. And it was perfect. By the time we ate it right after church, it was tender, fall apart. It was delicious. So you're just going to put everything in there, put the lid on it, set it on low for a good 10 hours and let that baby cook. For the sweet carrots, I did these the same way that I do on the stove top, but I knew since we had church that morning, if I could put them in the crock pot and just let them do their thing, it would be easier on me. So I did four cans of carrots, um, some brown sugar, and some corn syrup. That's normally what I do, like I said, on the stove top. Um, I just did them in the crock pot, so it was easier for me. Um, but I did about a half a cup of brown sugar per can of carrots. It's just going to depend on, you know, how many cans you use for your family um, but I would say about a half a cup of brown sugar per can and then I didn't measure the corn syrup I just added in and I like to do the brown sugar and the corn syrup because once it melts once the brown sugar melts it kind of makes it nice and sticky on the carrots it's not like super super liquidy um, and it makes like this little you know kind of glaze over them so I just put these on low for about four hours. They don't take long at all. Um, they're a super easy and delicious side dish. Next up, I think is my personal all-time favorite crock pot side dish, mashed potatoes. <laughs> I have just, um, peeled and diced up my potatoes. I did do these the night before and I had them soaking in water in the fridge. That way it was easier for me to dump these in at six in the morning. Um, and then I just filled it up with water. I told Luke and he, after he seen this, um, how many mashed potatoes were in there, I was like, I think I need a new crock pot. He's like, yeah, I think it's okay. <laughs> so I think he's finally convinced that I need a new crock pot. I need a bigger one so I can have all the delicious mashed potatoes in the big one. Um, I do have a recipe for this. I will have it linked for you guys. Y'all can get full measurements and everything. But these are so easy. Just peel, um, chop up your potatoes, put them in there, cover them with water, um, add in your chicken bouillon, seasoning, salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, whatever you want to use. Season with your heart, what your family is going to enjoy. And then put the lid on them, cook them on high for four hours, and then you're good to go. Drain them, and then we'll do the rest in just a second. Here is after the four hours on high. They are definitely ready to go. So I just put those in a colander in the sink and drained them. And I'm going to go ahead and add in my milk and add in my butter. Put the lid on it and let that kind of melt up on low. Um, just to, you want it, mashed potatoes get so much creamier and smoother if you warm up your um, whatever milk product that you're using to mix together your mashed potatoes. Here is the roast. It was just fall apart tender. It was absolutely delicious. Mm -hmm. 
now that your milk is heated up a little bit you're going to add in those potatoes back in and i like to hand mash mine you can use an electric mixer um i just always caution people to be careful because you can crack your crock pot um it's very easy if you accidentally you know hit it the wrong way on the side and i would cry if i cracked one of my crock pots i'm gonna be honest y'all know how much i love my crock pots um so i just hand mash mine season if needed um, i normally always add in extra salt and pepper here's what they look like you of course you need your butter on top don't forget your um you know like four or six tablespoons of butter on top and just put the lid on it and i just kept those on warm until it was time to eat and here is the full spread for that lunch. I did baked mac and cheese. My sister-in-law brought over some corn, fresh corn, so we cooked it. There is the mashed potatoes, the roast, the sweet carrots, and Luke is buttering up some rolls. And here is my plate. We had a big Sunday lunch. Last but not least, I'm gonna be sharing a recipe for taco chicken and rice. I did change it up a little bit, but the original recipe came from plain chicken. Um, I will have that recipe linked down below for you guys so y'all can see it. I've just got, I think, five or six boneless skinless chicken thighs y'all know i love chicken thighs better in the crock pot if i'm doing crock pot recipes you're going to need a can of cream of chicken soup you're also going to need a can of rotel and a packet of taco seasoning just mix that all together in a bowl and then we are going to dump that on top of my seasoned chicken thighs and you're just going to cook that on low for about four to six hours and then we will add in our rice. Here is what it looks like when it is done i'm just going to take and use my chopper and kind of break up that meat it just falls apart that's the best part about using chicken thighs it just falls apart it's so tender now her recipe she used a like spanish rice kind of deal that you had to cook on the stove and then add it in but i keep those ready rice packs in the pantry and absolutely love those so i added in i ended up adding two packs of those i wasn't sure how many i needed but i ended up adding two packs of those um, ready rice packs i didn't heat them up in the microwave or anything i just kind of mushed it around opened it up dumped it in because the heat from the chicken and all that is going to heat up the rice so I added both of those in, gave it a stir, and then I put the lid on it and it needed about 20 to 30 minutes um, to kind of thicken up um, and do its thing before we served it. Um, it was it was okay. I think I want to do it again, but I'm going to tweak it a little more. Um, it was kind of lacking in a flavor and it, like I said, where I used the plain rice, that definitely could have been my issue. So I'm going to try it again, but I'm going to try the, um, they make Spanish ready rice. So I'm going to try using that instead of the plain rice and see if we like it. Cause like I said, it was good. I mean, it was okay. It was just lacking in flavor. Um, but we, um, kind of doctored it up in our, in our bowls individually. So I think that helped. So here's what it looks like after it was completely done with the rice and everything. And then for my bowl, I took and added on some sour cream and some shredded cheese. I did end up adding salsa. I just forgot to get that. Um, I added it after I tasted it. <laughs> um, so I ended up adding salsa and then Luke and I both agreed that it needed like a queso. Um, so when I make this again, I think I'll also do my crock pot queso recipe and have it where you can drizzle that on top. And I think that that will be with the Spanish rice and doing it with the queso. I think that will be our, the winner, winner chicken dinner. 
We served ours with tortilla chips, but I feel like you could also serve it in soft shells if you wanted to do like burrito style. Um, but like I said, we'll definitely be making this again. I'll just make my tweaks and of course I'll share that with you when I do. And that is it y'all that wraps up today's video. I really hope you enjoyed these four super easy and delicious crock pot recipes and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.